Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Sponza. Now you've no doubt seen Sponza at some point in time because this is probably the most famous scene in the world of game development. And you may not have known, but Sponza is actually a real place in Croatia. This is a shot of it, you probably recognize it now, uh, but if not, let's go see it in computer game form. Here is Babylon JS's example of Sponza. Now Crytek released this demo back in like 2010 and since then it's been sort of been used as like the showcase for game engine capabilities uh, ever since. So it's just this uh, cool scene. It's got a lot of dynamic lighting scenarios about it. And frankly, it's available. So it's sort of like the hello world of game engine demonstrations. Well, we're talking about it today because Super Sponsor was just released. Now that's my own naming, but hey, I find that a little bit more fun. Um, and here you can see Super Sponsor in action. This is an updated version of the Sponsor game level loaded up in Godot 4. By the way, Godot 4 is a beta version. Version. So you're going to see some uh, graphical artifacts, nothing to be like those little squares. Uh, those won't be in the final version. But here you can see uh, the same scene. So let's go back. Yeah, that versus that. And now let's zoom back a little bit and we'll take a look at a couple other interesting things in this scene. So for example, you can see here it's literally got... Uh, probably a thousand times the polygonal information of the original. Uh, plus there are a ton of light sources in here. I actually turned them off because they're they're a little bit on the overwhelming side when you use the way this is set up by default. Uh, but there is a ton of lighting. I just have the two going, the one at each end here. And you're gonna notice there's a lot of um, a lot of detail to the textures. It is using a modern uh, PBR based workflow all of the stuff is super high resolution. So it's more similar uh, to what you should expect in a modern game engine. And right now I have it being lit by the external light, by the sunlight coming in. Uh, and that's the cool thing with this example is you can really use it to test out your lighting settings. But it's not just this main Sponza level. They've actually released a couple of packs for it. There's, there's also the curtains. So it isn't, wouldn't be sponsored without the curtains. So you can load them in as well. Again, super high resolution textures on them. And it allows you to see how light is going to interplay with fabric in your scene. Um, so that is another optional add-on we've got. And then also there is a cypress tree uh, that you can load up on the very inside of uh, your project. And the cool thing here is Super Sponza was released in just about every format you could imagine. It's also available in... Um, uh, universal scene descriptor format, Pixar's uh, universal interchange format, uh, also behind NVIDIA's Omniverse. There is an FBX version here. There's a GLTF version here. So you should be able to use it in what game engine technology or renderer you want. By the way, I loaded all of these default scenes into um, Blender and wow, does it kill it. So just be aware, these are really high detail scenes we are dealing with here. So you can see one really nice thing with Sponza in general, again, is that you can use it to play with lighting. So over here, I have set up the main level. That's the this one right here. So we can do some things with the lighting on it. So I've set up uh, global illumination and uh, reflection probes inside of Godot 4. So you can start seeing some of the graphical capabilities of Godot. So let's turn those two on. So now you can see uh, definitely we've got uh, much different lighting going on. Now let's make this an interior space like so. And then let's save that and go back to our main scene. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is this cypress tree, when you're dealing with dynamic lighting, uh, it can be a pig just because you've got so many shadowing ports. So if it starts to really slow down, uh, that could be part of your issue. But here you can see, uh, now you can really start coming here, play with the lighting, get different effects, different things going on. We could go over here and uh, turn these lights all back on. I have them all disabled by default. By the way, you'll also find when you import them into different game engines, you're gonna have different issues. For example, each one of these actually has um, an emissive texture on it, which if that picks up plus the light source, uh, it does start getting uh, a little bit on the bright side, but you can get some really cool work out of there. Also, as you can see, you can do some really cool graphical stuff in Godot 4. I've also got an example running in Godot 3.5. Uh, the performance isn't as good, but frankly, it looks quite solid as well. So this is the brand new Sponza from Intel. Definitely a big development just because it gives us this universal tool to work between uh, 3D graphics applications and game engines that is really useful for someone like myself because when I get something new and I want to showcase what its capabilities are like uh, I often don't have demo scenes to work from and now we do uh, so if you're interested in learning more about it uh, it is available this is coming entirely from Intel um, they're all quite large so the the base scene is a 3.2 gigabyte zip it's in GLTF Maya 
uh, sorry, this one is max uh, FBX USD formats there, but they can get the add-ons. There's the curtains, the IV. Oh, I forgot to show the IV. There's also IV you can load in as well. Uh, there's a set of the tree that you can bring in. And then there's also this one that has like 100 emissive candles. Uh, and then there's also an animated knight that has nothing to do with it. Now, interestingly enough, this one seems to be in ASCII FBX format. So Blender will not deal with it. And there is no uh, GLTF one for this. There's GLTF for every other file in here uh, except for this guy but it does work perfectly fine in Unreal Engine and Unity I've checked that out already it's just going to have a bit of a fight uh, with Blender and uh, Godot getting this guy to work. So just do be aware of that. Uh, if you're interested in some of the uh, details behind this new Sponza, well, the interesting thing here is this comes from Anton uh, Klapnian, I'm guessing, uh, Vice President Accelerated Computer Systems and Graphics Group Chief Technology Officer at Intel. Now, the cool thing here is this guy is actually the same guy uh, who released the version way back. So this is a modern version of the iconic sample I published in 2010 when I was at Crytek. So it's the same dude, just 12 years later, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, it became a default scene across gaming, visualization, film, and other fields of research and development, published and referenced in thousands of academic and research papers. Like I said, this is probably the most famous scene in the graphics world. So I, it's cool to get an update of it like this. Uh, so after more than a decade, uh, Sponza scene was overdue for an update. The new scene incorporates physically based materials with 4k textures high resolution geometry uh photogrammetry uh, photogrammetry matched to the real sponsor atrium in croatia uh we built it as a as standardized as possible and offered it in several modern formats with a particular goal of making graphics research more reproducible uh, it's a common problem in the graphics research with the new Sponza as a researcher. If you can publish a new method, you can render using the professional camera setup and let the world compare um, your results to reference images to literally see the difference in the impact your research makes. Uh, so it's a very, very cool project because there's more and more about it here, uh, but it is kind of like the benchmark of computer graphics. And here you can see based from the real version uh, to the sponsor version, it is just nice to have this super high resolution option out there. And again, real world example, the uh, way that we used to model it. And I, I actually got to give Babylon GS credit. This, they made the original Sponza look quite good. Uh, but you can really kind of see much lower polygon count. There's, um, no carvings or details there. The, uh, the lion head definitely nowhere near in terms. And then here we are, there is the lion head. There is the actual, uh, wall textures looking a heck of a lot like the original. Uh, and then out here you see again, uh, a ton more detail carved into the world, uh, into all the areas around it. And it is sort of a lighting uh, playground. So you can really come in here and get some uh, massively different results using different lighting settings. I've been playing with it for the last day and I've, I've made it look so incredibly different with just a few tweaks. Um, and it is uh, impressive. I'm glad to see that Intel released this. This is the kind of stuff that... Uh, we need more of. So people say, oh, why don't you benchmark or why don't you compare engines and so on? Well, there's generally not a good cross comparison tool out there. Uh, and now that's actually there. It doesn't mean I'm going to start doing benchmarks, but it means I could. And that's also kind of important. So that is it. Super Sponza, as I have termed it, uh, a new contribution to the world from uh, Intel. Definitely going to be showing up more and more, definitely in some of my future videos. So get used to it. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.